Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series where I'm showing you how to build a real-world crowd sale that can be used to raise real funds in a real ICO on the Ethereum mainnet. So check out the previous videos in this series if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to see the next videos in the playlist whenever they come out. This episode is presented by QuickNode, the fastest and easiest way to run your own Ethereum node. QuickNode lets you run a personal cloud-based Ethereum node in a flash without having to download any blockchain data or keep it in sync. Sign up at quicknode.io today to start running your own Ethereum node in no time. So in this video, I'm going to keep uh, showing you how to finalize this crowd sale, and we're actually going to talk about um, distributing tokens like you know to founders, and like a foundation and you know, partners and things like that. Basically, we're gonna handle token distribution. So if you ever see anything like this, this is what we're talking about. You know, we'll basically have a percentage that's reserved for the public sale. Um, well, what we'll do is like, you know, whenever they buy tokens, uh, we'll, we'll basically chop off a percentage for um, the founders, the partners, and the foundation, and we'll calculate that as a percentage of you know the total supply of the token, which will be you know calculated based upon how many tokens are actually minted in the crowd sale. Because remember, this is a mintable token; it's a minted crowd sale. Whenever investors buy tokens, um, you know the total supply will increase, and we'll use a percentage of those tokens at the end. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go back to our project here. Um, but first let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I forgot to show something in the last video. I remember I told you that this possible token we're only going to use once. Well, I lied. Um, one big step we need to do before we, uh, handle distribution is one last bit of logic for finalizing the crowd sale. Uh, we need to transfer the ownership of the token back to the wallet. Uh, if you finalize this crowd sale currently, there's no way for you to own this token anymore. Um, so that's not good. So, uh, let's say, let's actually assign this to a variable and transfer it to, uh, the wallet. So we'll just say possible token, uh, is a new possible token at this address, just like we did the mintable token. And we'll unpause it like we did in the last video, right? We got a test for that already. And now we'll actually transfer the ownership back to the wallet. So we'll do that like this. We'll say possible token transfer ownership wallet. So remember, we did that at the beginning of our test. We said, um, let's see, where was it? You know, this dot token transfer ownership to the crowd sale. Remember, the crowd sale owns the token, so it can mint tokens and things like that. Um, but now we want to actually transfer the tokens back to uh, the wallet so that it can own the token uh, after the crowd sale is finished. So it's pretty easy to write a test for that. We'll basically um, say this. We'll, uh, after we finish this minting, and before we, uh, well, actually, we unpause it, actually. That's the order of the code. We'll just say it transfer the ownership back to the wallet. So we'll get the owner. We'll say await this.token.owner, and we'll say owner should equal wallet, right? Well, say, uh, yeah, wallet. We'll do this dot wallet. I think both work. Wallet's coming in from here, so we can reference it that way. But we also, I want to be explicit. You know, this is what we assigned in the constructor for the crowd sale. So we'll test against that. All right, so we'll save this test and run it. But first, I'm going to restart Ganache. I recommend you do the same because you might run out of ether when running this test. So let's run it. All right, it passes. So now that that little bit of housekeeping is taken care of, let's actually talk about um, the token distribution. So I'm going to store um, the values to the token distribution inside of um, our smart contract here. Basically, I'm going to uh, store this and say uh, token distribution. All right, um, we're gonna have three funds. We'll say event. We'll say the founders equals ten. 
All right, copy this. And we'll also say a foundation. And we'll also say uh, like a partners. All right, and they're all equally going to have 10%. Now, where is the rest of the where are the rest of the tokens going to go? Well, we'll uh, actually say token sale percentage. All right. Oops. And that's going to be seventy. Okay. So this is going to be hard coded into our contract, and part of the reason is because we're running out of constructor arguments here. Um, so. I'm actually going to make these public as well so we can read them and test for them. And also, it's good for you know people to know that you're being honest when you, when you show your token distribution. Um, you remember uh, the little chart we saw earlier? This is basically the code representation of that. All righty. So let's, uh, let's actually test for that. So we can go back to our test file and read this from the... Uh, smart contract S below this uh, finalization function. I'm going to minimize this. Let's actually describe uh, token distribution. All right. So we'll do that, and we'll say basically, you know, it tracks the distribution correctly. And we'll just say you know, first it uh, tracks the token sale percentage. So token sale percentage equals this await, this crowd sale token sale percentage. And let's uh, let's keep track of that amount up here. Let's go ahead and take those values that came from our contract and um, store them here. So basically after the ICO stages, we'll configure our test this way, all right? So these are the same percentages from our smart contract. We'll test against those down here. So let's just run this and say, does it have the correct token sale percentage? All right. So token sale percentage should be big number equal to this dot token sale percentage. So it has the correct token sale percentage. All right. Save that. I'm going to restart Ganache. All right. And then I'm going to run the test. Let's test it. All right. It passes. So now we can basically, uh, you know, just copy this and paste it several times and change the values for each one. So token sale, we'll just replace that. Say, uh, let's reference the contract. So founders, founders, foundation, and partners. So founders. Oops. And then. Uh, Foundation. Oops, I haven't changed these. This be founders. And foundation. And then partners. All right. So I'll save that. Go back to the test. Actually, sorry, I'm going to restart Ganache as well, just to be safe. All right. Run the test. All right, passes. All right, the next thing we want to do is actually, you know, verify this is a valid percentage breakdown. We basically want to, you know, check that like you know, these numbers add up to 100. You know, if one of these is wrong, this was five, then this wouldn't be a percentage, right? It would be like, you know, <laughs> it just wouldn't work. So um, let's do that. So I'm gonna copy this example, save it, and uh, paste it here. I'm going to clear out uh, these lines, should be a big number, clear those out, um, and say basically it is a valid percentage breakdown. All right, so token distribution, basically describe token distribution, it is a valid percentage breakdown. Uh, we'll get all these values. I guess we could refactor these to be like uh, in a before each function. Uh, I'll leave that up to you as an exercise if you want to do that. Uh, I'm just going to do it for here now. And I'll say basically const total. Uh, I'm going to copy all these. Paste them. Oops, sorry. Paste them here. 
and say to number. I'm going to add these all together like this. All right. So total is going to equal to the token sale percentage to number. These are all big numbers. This is not the greatest code in the world, guys, but this is a test. It's not production code. Um, if you want to refactor this, like I said, I'll leave that to you as an exercise. I'm just trying to move along with this. So total percentage, uh, token sale percentage plus founder percentage plus foundation plus partners should equal 100. So we'll say total uh, should equal 100. Save that. We'll restart Ganache before we run the test. And we'll do that. All right, looks like I made an error here. So total, sorry, should, my fault. All right, let's restart Ganache on the test. Thanks for bearing with me on the typos, guys. <laughs> All right, it passes. All right, so that's it, guys, for today. That's how you actually track the token percentages, you know, the the the, the percentages for each uh, part of the fund. In the next video, um, we're going to continue building upon this finalization function, and we're actually going to distribute the tokens among the team um, whenever this goal is reached. We're going to like do that here. We'll say distribute tokens. All right, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to put them um in like a time lock and so that they can't actually touch them for like you know two years or something like that so be sure to subscribe to the channel to see that next video when it comes out and until then thanks for watching dap university mm -hmm.